Hey pals. Yeah, it's gonna be that kind of video. <laughs> okay, so if you've been browsing through your new Sony a7S III or any new camera for that matter, you probably noticed that there's something called an NTSC and PAL switcher, which apparently lets you unlock higher frame rates or lower frame rates. But what do those acronyms actually mean? Like, who cares? What is PAL? What is NTSC? Well, after this video, you're gonna NTSC what it's all about, pal. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is not gonna stop. So let's start with what do these acronyms actually stand for? NTSC stands for National Television Standards Committee and is used primarily in the USA and Japan. And PAL is for Phase Alternate Line, which is used basically everywhere else except for places like Russia, France, Pakistan, and China, who all use a system called CCAM. But we're just gonna stick with PAL and NTSC since those are probably the ones that you're most familiar with. So we know what they stand for, but what do they actually do? Well, they're both basically processes for encoding a picture. Going back to the days of broadcast television, line by line, two alternating fields at a time, pixel rows were assembled to create one frame. This is also known as interlacing. Today, we are a bit more progressive when it comes to displaying images. But back in the analog broadcasting days, televisions had to interpret signals which are tied to the hertz frequency of your household, according to the number of pixel rows needed to fill a frame. The standard picture frequency for NTSC is 60 hertz, and the standard for PAL is 50 hertz. This hertz frequency in turn dictates the frame rate. NTSC is 30 and PAL is 25, because remember, two alternating fields. So it's actually 60 and 50, but it's like 60 half frames and 50 half frames, which gets you to 30 and 25. And the Hertz frequency dictates the time it takes to deliver and assemble those frames on your television. Well, analog television that is. And you dictate how many people get to see this video by smashing that like button. Go ahead, just, just click it, it's, it's right there. Thanks. An interesting factoid emerged while we were doing research for this video, and that is to explain the weird 29.97 frame rate that we are all now used to. Basically, with the emergence of color, black and white televisions were unable to read these signals correctly, and therefore a chrominance or color signal had to be added between the luminance signal oscillations. This could safely be ignored by black and white TVs, but could be read by color TVs using a special adapter. This increased the time it took to deliver each frame thus bringing the 30 frames per second down to 29.97. So for filmmakers, why do we need to care about PAL versus NTSC when on cinema cameras we can just dial in the frame rate to exactly what we want? Well, basically you should just adhere to the standards in your country. Digital signals are the norm these days, but televisions still adhere to certain parameters like refresh rate, which in PAL is 50 Hertz, which is 25 frames per second, and NTSC, which is 60 hertz, you guessed it, 30 frames or 29.97. Also, a very important reason that we should consider PAL versus NTSC when shooting is for lighting. Due to the frequency of our electricity in our different countries, lights will flicker at a different rate, and you want your frame rate to be synchronized with your lights so that it doesn't flicker. Standard light bulbs actually turn on and off 50 times per second, which is so fast that our eyes just perceive it as consistent light. Cameras, however, if they are shooting at a higher frame rate or in between frame rates, then it starts to flicker because it's not synchronized. You can also, in certain cases, fix the synchronization issue using just your shutter speed. So it might not be necessary to switch to PAL or NTSC. Essentially, what you wanna do is make sure that your shutter speed is divisible by your frame rate. So for PAL, 25 and multiples, and for NTSC, 30, 24, and multiples. This is also why on these newer mirrorless cameras, when if you're in NTSC mode, you can shoot 120 frames per second, but in PAL mode, you can only shoot 100, multiples of 25 and 30. But you'll also notice that it's never actually 120 frames per second, it's like 119.97 or something. Another very important consideration, for us at least, is whether or not you subscribed. <laughs> Go ahead, click it. We've got tons of very cool filmmaking content. Go check out the channel, browse, there's a lot. But getting back to it, if you're shooting outside, don't even stress about NTSC or PAL. The sun doesn't care. It's the only consistent thing in life. LED lights are also pretty consistent, 
but that's a whole other video that we don't have time for to go into this video. Just know that LED lights are usually a pretty good in-between for most frame rates. But let's say you made a mistake. Don't worry, DaVinci Resolve's D-Flicker can usually solve some of these problems, although I wouldn't put all my money on it. There's also this really cool trick where if you duplicate your footage and offset it by one frame and then put that top layer at 50%, it sometimes removes some of the flicker, but again, not all of it. So the easiest solution is to just do it before you press record. So anyways, standards are standards. And now you know the history behind why you can NTSC your favorite movie. <laughs> no? <sighs> okay, buddy, pal. So just set your workflows to fit the region that you're in and know your frame rates and your shutter speeds before you go out shooting. That way your Premiere projects and your After Effects compositions will all be on the same page. Even though most editing software these days do a pretty bang up job of just mixing frame rates. So that's it for this quick video on the differences between PAL and NTSC. We've dropped all of our references in the description below, so check those out if you want to. And while you're down there, you might as well smash that like button if you haven't already. And you know, just next to it, there's a subscribe button, click it. And if you have any more questions, I'll try my best to answer all of them. Just leave them down there in the comments. So until next time, go out there, stay safe and make your movie.